Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to our second match here in our doubleheader opening day action for the Summit for China. Coming up next, we have Ehome taking on Tong Fu in a best of three showdown. And gods, Tong Fu are heavy underdogs here. Yeah, I, I feel like this is maybe even more one side than what we're seeing here. To me, this is a Ehome squad who have been dominant when they've been playing officials. And Tong Fu actually had a pretty poor showing during the Frankfurt Majors. So I. I don't see Tongfu as a team in good form. They've got the potential on their lineup. You bring in Faith, who's an experienced captain, TI2 champion. So um, you combine that with some of their experienced youngsters, U9, as well as Bingo. I think the individual players are there. It just hasn't clicked yet for Tongfu. Um, looks like I'm ready to hop in the draft. Okay. I think you're looking at God's screen, Roland. No? Okay, it's just... No, this is mine. This is mine. All right, anyway, we have a draft. Game <laughs> one, ready to begin. That is God's. That is God's. Yeah? Oh, that's, that's me. Okay, we're was, in the draft I was, I was now. I'm doing my research, you know. It's, I want to see exactly. I knew Tongfu did bad during the uh, Frankfurt Majors. They actually finished last place in their group. So it was. It was especially underwhelming as far as they're concerned. So we're going to see. What's going to come out from the two teams here? Tong Fu going to lead the draft with a Queen of Pain first pick into Winter Wyvern. Ehome go for the Spirit Breaker mm -hmm. Undying. Kind of reminiscent of what they used to be doing with their well, during the qualifiers with this lineup. They really love these tanky dual offlaners. They're playing a lot of Tusk for 11, but even without the Tusk, they're going for the Undying, the Spirit Breaker. Lot, really looking for heroes that can create Ten space seconds, really? for their mid laner CTY, uh, as, well, their carry CTY, as well as their mid laner Old Chicken, who sometimes actually mix up their role. Ehome the reminds me a lot of like where EG are now, with Arteezy as well as Sumail. It feels like they've got two fairly greedy, flashy players in their safe lane and carry role, but uh, their safe lane and mid role, but so far seem to be making it work. Yeah, the IO actually getting a cop and a ban here. That hero mm. was was ignored in the previous series. As e home Tongfu get into their second stage of bans. The e home fourth ban coming out next. They will remove Clockwork. They quickly grab a gyrocopter. Radiant team and pick. now into the third ban. Or uh, sorry, third pick for Tongfu. Quap Wyvern already grabbed. Darkseer was actually banned first stage this time, so bit more kind of standard as far as that goes. Let's see, what a Tong Fu want to get their um, grubby paws on. Hmm. Here's to see, they're definitely not really drafting what you expect from the Radiant side. They banned out the Shadow Fiend in the first stage. The IO ban makes a bit sense. Kaka, one of, his, uh, one of his better heroes and something that Ehome can always run. So Five still looking for three. maybe an offlane pickup. I think Tusk would be amazing. I'm, I'm surprised it's been ignored this far and I think uh, if Tong feel confident in it for Bingo in the offlane, it would fit them nicely. Just give them that good early to mid-game tempo controller, their initiator to kind of set things up for the Queen of Pain. Uh, and, and then get some kind of aggressive safe lane farming carry to go with it, be it a Gyro, a Juggernaut, uh, something that can benefit from the Tusk setup. But for now, uh, holding holding their cards to their chest as they haven't really revealed too much with the Wyvern Queen of Pain. But they're going to have to lay something down here. As Ehome for now, just the Gyrocopter. They're going all in with their early to mid game aggression, at least as far as these three picks are concerned. Tong Fu backing off for a Rubik, but another weaker landing support against the, the face rush Ehome want to bring. This is feeling mm. rather risky, gods. It does give them a way to cancel the charge. That's something to be said about the Rubik, but. I mean, you imagine throwing like. Any kind of run at you hero from here on out. I don't know, a Templar Assassin maybe. Yeah. I would I would have said Ember, but he's actually banned. Ten I mean, can they even just say screw it and grab a Tusk and just run it anyway? Yeah, tusk Spear Breaker on Dying Gyro, get yeah, your mid sure. TA and just roll three. over Tong Fu. You get the three melee bruises. Yeah, you've, you've got two melee supports, but I don't think that's actually an issue. I think you could fit the Tusk in just fine. Both teams could easily fit the Tusk. Uh, m probably more so Tongfu, but it worked so on the face rush. The TA you mentioned also great because you're rushing at them, then you're slowing them with the traps. Uh, and that's just where Tongfu are going to have a lot of issues dealing with any e home aggression. But we'll see if they have a TA in mind or something else. And I think Gyro just not the. I mean, he doesn't want. You don't want him to be your solo carry scaling into the late game. And that's where getting something like a TA as well fits pretty well. So we'll see if it's going to be something like that or if they have something else in mind. Has Ehome run anything unusual as of late um, that you, comes to mind for you? 
No, they haven't, they haven't played matches since, what, the Nanyang China qualifier, maybe? Has they actually played anything since that, that best of five they won against? They had that double best of five not, against I guess not, because they, they got invited to Frankfurt, yeah. right? So. They didn't have to play Frankfurt. I don't think there's They were one of the kind of surprising invites with all the, really? the roster changes yeah. they had. They, that, were, they were very borderline to me. I could have seen Valve going a different yes. direction and maybe inviting, like, say, Fnatic, for example. Yeah. I think they Although Ehome definitely seems stronger than Fnatic yeah. based on what I've seen. Uh, it, it's especially easy to say now with Fnatic kind of falling off and struggling mm -hmm. in the, the uh, qualifiers themselves. But um, they, I think very much like they won the two best of fives against IG and it was like, well, they won these qualifiers. WCA qualifier even had teams like Vici, LGD, and Nubian. So it was like, well, they won this tournament which had all the top Chinese teams. How can Which we are getting invited. Yeah. How can you not invite Ehome? Yeah. yeah, so that was, WCA was probably like the tipping point since uh, Nanyang didn't have all those teams. So Tongfu go into an Alchemist. We're going to see what looks like a safe lane farming Alchemist. Nope. Uh, could be a mid alchemist and a safe quad. Yeah, that's true. Um, so mid lane... Ehome Invoker, so Old Chicken, I believe, the guy, the guy who's going to be handling the Invoker, although I have seen CTY also played in the past. Five what kind of Invoker remaining. do you expect? Um, they don't really have good Sunstrike setup. Um, probably Quaswex, yeah, no, no setup for Sunstrike. Depends if they feel like they want more pushing power. That's where the Eggs of Invoker going Necrobook can Siege Towers. Hmm. Alchemist's biggest weakness is armor, and that's also where Eggs is is decent, but... I think Quaswex fits the tempo of the game better, where you're just face rushing. You want to have that little bit of defensive capabilities to just cover cover yourselves as you engage, which the Exort build doesn't provide you. So I, I'm slightly lean towards Quaswex, although I think both have their pros and cons. This is an interesting grab. Invoker not very popular right now. Yep. I'm trying to recall, I think I saw one team ran it in the Col Frankfurt qualifiers. And it was, uh, I think it was an uh, American team, I want to say. Yeah, I saw one game in China with an invoker as well, but so-so. Oh, it was Yuar played it once for Digital Chaos. Okay. That's right. Nice. Played Sunstrike Invoker. Actually worked pretty well early okay. on. but I, I think this invoker, uh, this Alchemist pick was really, really bad. I don't see the hero doing anything this game. It's not going to stop the aggression. It needs too much farm to come online. It's going to get punished. Ehome just have the best lineup to punish an Alchemist, so... I, I just don't see don't see it amounting to too much, especially AA. if you go for a greedy build. So AA the final ban as Tongfu realize Ehome do need that final support Spirit Breaker Undying. One of these guys likely yeah. to be helping out the lanes, probably the Undying. Mm. Oh, silencer pick? No, okay, Phoenix comes out. Hmm. Okay, maybe it is a, a Phoenix off lane. I think they play the support Phoenix support more. Support Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. A, or Phoenix dual lane, like a Phoenix Undying. We'll have to see which is getting farm. Um, I haven't actually got a safe lane support for the gyrocopter. I don't feel like Phoenix does a whole lot there. Maybe they'll wait to see what Tongfu pick as their off Some laner. strong off laner would probably be nice. Yeah. Someone who can actually pressure the lane. Yeah. You want to try and force the Undying to go to the safe lane, which Ten I think seconds. if you pick a strong off laner, Undying ends up in the safe lane as the zoning support and Phoenix Five Spirit Breaker will go off lane, really? which means the off lane is weaker because there's no Undying. The Undying's forced just to protect gyro. So that to me is the best case scenario for Tongfu. Why not a Wind Ranger again? Um, hmm. You haven't got a dual lane with it. I don't think you can dual lane with it with Rubik or Wyvern, but it's not. As, it's nowhere near as strong as the Undying Wind Ranger we saw. Mm -hmm. I. What would I'm you not, prefer? Let's see. Is Spirit Break. Oh, Spirit Break is picked up by Ehome. So, ooh. I mean, offlaners are really limited right now. So, something that can deal with the hyper aggression of Ehome. Oh God. I need a hero pull in front of me. I, I, they are really pigeonholed here. They're with their screwed. Last they're screwed. I, they were, I, when I saw the Alchemist, I thought, I thought they were screwed. There you go. All right. Big Daddy. Ursa in the house. Huh. No idea if this is going to work, but at least they're not afraid to experiment. Great way to kill the egg, obviously, with overpower. So that's pretty cute. Tanky. I, though they have a lot of control for him from the Invoker Spirit Breaker yeah. duo. I just don't feel like they needed to counter the egg. They needed to solve their laning stage issues, and that is not what er the Ursa pick gives them. But they uh, are going to look to have some strong lanes here, potentially, with an offlane Queen of Pain. They may even try to do some dual lanes here, like a Rubik Quop. That could be one way of contesting the offlane and forcing Ehome to add ex additional heroes into the safe lane. It looks like it will be an offlane farming Undying, though, as Eleven is the one who picks up the Undying. Interesting. So Spirit Breaker going to be the ganker yeah. here. 
Yeah. Phoenix. Undying mm. versus Ursa. That's uh, that's not the easiest that's matchup for an Undying, especially if he gets some help yeah. for the Ursa. Very curious to see how the two teams lane this, because even with, like, okay, now we know it's an offlane Undying. Like, here is, like, Phoenix can either zone the yeah, Tongfu offlane. They could just sack CTY's Gyrocopter and say, dude, just get some levels. You'll come back later, like we saw last game. Uh, always a possibility as well. So... Both teams with a number of options. We could see Queen of Pain just be a solo offlane. We could see the supports protect the mid alchemist. Maybe they look to contest with the Quap. Maybe they just try to secure Ursa's farm. I, Ursa, I feel, unlike the Gyrocopter, can't just be left alone. He definitely needs at least one support, preferably the Rubik with him, which it looks like will be the case. Let's see how the Ursa pick works. Definitely something fresh here from Tong Fu. Does have the infused claws of the ferocious heart. Well, he's. Pretty not, sweet item. Hasn't got the cowboy Ursa. No, not as sweet as the Alpine, but these are these aren't too shabby. So the big question, of course, for Tang Fu, do they get their bounty rune for U9 off the bat? Seems like uh, won't be heavily are. contested by Ehom. Hmm, they've got three heroes for now. It looks like Phoenix also heading bottom. It's always a question of trying to figure out which rune they're going for. You definitely want to try and stop the Alchemist, who hasn't leveled anything yet, so... I mean, this is an Invoker and a Phoenix at level 1. Oh, I think Tongfu are realizing they're in trouble top lane. This is an Invoker who's not the best level 1 fight hero. They're going to engage. Lanham looking for the big multiple hero charge, but they're going to toss him back. The three hero stun! Unai, and he wants that bounty ready. Screw up Grievel's Greed, but the Spirit Grey pick Breaker grabs it. Oh, that's a ton twister. And they deny him, and they force out his regen early, so now the lane is hard. Like everyone on Ehome took a big chunk of damage, but ultimately worth it. Unai not getting the level 1 bounty room, which is just. There's like that such split second edge. right when the clock hits here, and you're like, just spawn already! Come yeah. on! And then it pops, but it's already too late. <laughs> I've always it's always like been a frustrating thing about the first the first rune. It's like it doesn't really spawn on the zero mark. It's like zero it's like half point a second. Two? <laughs> yeah. Something? I don't know. Wow, CTY getting wrecked at the top lane. There's a win there's the Arctic burn in three seconds. Oh, if that was up they'd probably get a, a wow. first flood there. And Bingo didn't fully chase for it, so we'll see. So they are running this extremely irritating undying Phoenix dual lane. And just for good measure, Lanham's gonna come beat down on the bear as well. Yeah. I feel like they could be getting even more aggressive on CTY here. Bingo just trying to go for last hits while Faith zones him out, but they could really threaten to kill him and force out Sal's early on if they commit both heroes to harassing. Meanwhile, old chicken forced out the salve already from U9. Damn, he's got five denies, four last hits. That's a bad start for Alchemist. Feels pretty typical. And this is an Invoker mid, definitely not known for his laning prowess, but yeah. with the Null Tally, the Exhort build, or the early Exhort point, I should say. Yeah, I can't. can't probably really not actually sure. the Exhort build, because he's gotten the point of Wex now. Yes, that's actually a good point. So going for the Wex means he'll go for the level 3 Alacrity, then transition into the Quas Wex build. What seems to be becoming a very popular way to play the hero, and I think like, definitely one of something I really like to see nowadays. It's Doesn't always been Invoker's... Well, it hasn't always, but it's yeah. now Invoker's biggest weakness. He's just so weak in the lane at the early it's, levels if you don't go this build. Oh, Alchemist is banking on a bounty rune here at top. He's really all in on this. If it's not a bounty rune, he's actually in trouble. Oh, God. That he's, RNG. He's, yeah, he's not got RNG in his side. And at the same time, if your game plan's built on rune RNG, then it's, it's a kind a of flimsy game, game plan. plan. Yeah. They... I mean... It was also the RNG of whether or not Ehome contested bottom or top rune. If they had just camped out the bottom rune and gotten Alchemist that bottom bounty rune, they would be also fine. That was another kind of 50-50 gamble, which they took and didn't pay off. So now it is indeed Alacrity, and just for good measure, he'll skill the Chaos Meteor. <laughs> <laughs> not sure that's anything that uh, Old Chicken will be using. I'm not sure if that was intentional. I think he may get the Quas when for He may get the... Uh, Cold snap when possible. We'll see. It's it's a lot of damage. Even level one chaos media hits like a truck. That's I will tell you that is not something you ever expect an evoker to drop on you at three minutes into the game. So not sure it will be very effective, yeah. but it will definitely catch him off guard. So for now, Alchemist doesn't even have bottle. He's gonna start stacking up his medium camp, just looking to secure his catch up farm. And Tongfu don't have the best ways of just helping him out with their supports because of the aggro lane from Ehome, they have to commit the Rubik to the safe lane and it doesn't look like they want to leave Queen of Pain just solo in the off lane. It's Ehome who actually switch up their lanes and rotate gyro bottom. 
Moving on to 11, starting to drop low. Can't quite finish him off though. He will be able to heal up. Has the mango regen, a salve available as well. But I just, I can't get over this mid lane. Old Chicken is 20 and 17. Yeah, this is... Alchemist is 3 1. This is just. Oh, I... I have never. I mean, I rarely see anyone dominate mid this hard, let alone an invoker of all heroes. It's cool to see this Alacrity build work so well. Like, I, I think this will be the new build more and more, and we'll keep on seeing Tong Fu now going to give up first blood. E Home getting aggressive, and CTY, his rotation proving to be already impactful in the game. I mean, it's it's going to have to be the Zex Bingo show, I feel, of God's. On the Queen of Pain. Well, yeah. the way the lanes are going. He is known, like, he got picked up as one of those big pub stars, one of those kind of top MMR players, and despite not being put in that role in this team, he's in the offlane and normally not playing these flashy heroes. A Queen of Pain with free farm is the kind of hero where he can have that kind of high impact, so maybe you'll be able to make some room for his team this game. He definitely needs to. Oh, Fuzzy was. He might be able to get a kill as Kaka gets lifted, dropped down, and clapped. And what do you know? Alchemist again, no bounty rune. Yeah. So you get a kill, it's, it's like, like shit. I'd rather have a bounty rune. Three bounty out. runes in a row missed. 24 and 23. Is this this has to be approaching a record. 47 total CS at sub five minutes. It's insane. Right? This, this Especially guy is... for Invoker in the modern era. I think that's got to be a record. Old Chicken's ridiculous. Granted, Alchemist is not the strongest laning hero, but even so, this is just ridiculous. He's saying, CTY, you're not the only 10-minute god on this team. I can, I can also dominate the first 10 minutes of the game. <laughs> and possibly beyond. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More likely beyond. Shots fired. <laughs> yeah. Well, you home a very good position here in the early game. Yeah, the main Still thing got is that just, meteor. Oh. Yeah, he's actually he's a good leveling up Exort. So two quads, two Exort. Okay, maybe it is just it is the value Exort point. In yeah, Wex. so we talked about the value point in Exort for the Quas Wex build going Alacrity, but you can also do a value point in Wex for the early Alacrity in an Exort Quas build, and it also gives you the Ghost Walk should you get ganked as an escape tool. So just an early value Wex point. So regardless of whether you go Quas Wex or or Quas Exort, it still seems like we're seeing these value points to get early Alacrity. Yeah, it feels like you still want that one point in, in either Wex or Exhort, no matter which build you go for. Yeah. They're going to dive on the bottom lane onto LPC. CTY's there in position with the Rocket Barrage. We'll quickly finish off the Rubik. Sync Q forced to retreat. And God, oh God, oh nine, please let it be a bounty room. But this one's being contested. Starts catalyzing the stun, lobs it out. And what do you know? A delicious, nutritious double damage rune. Normally, you're very happy to see this thing, but... Meteor comes out. Oh, Bingo blinked into that. Uh, not too much damage. A or he it's a level two exhort. It doesn't hurt that bad. Yeah. And level one wax, so it did not last all particularly long. Travel time a bit lacking. The Zinku almost finished off by Rocket Barrage. Good toss by LPC to save the day. Yep. Tried to bait him in too. Had 10 stick charges, which he even holds on to, which means he can use those at a more important time. Imagine if those were all bounty runes. They would be actually in oh, pretty yeah. good shape for Tung Fu. I, I think it would be like a okay early game and it's actually like pretty even as far as the farm exchange goes right now not the mid lane by any means but across the board tong fu aren't getting completely destroyed in the lanes so for now no stacks available for faith it has been blocked off already by e home and he's gonna unfortunately find that out fairly soon they've done a pretty good job of slowing down this out whether it's just pure rune control last hitting lane or blocking the stacks yeah. they they're not giving away any gold easily. 39 and 31, the CS is old chicken continues to impress. And this is, I mean, you compare that to like Zex Bingo. Oh, bottom Here's, lane charge. Oh, huge action breakout. Gets off the clap, doesn't have his ultimate yet, but does have the stick charges in Q. Should probably be popping that stick soon. And he's onto it for now in the trees. They finish off the Phoenix. He jukes, he retreats, CTY, unable to get in range. And Zin Q waiting, now pops it. But may go down anyway to the rocket barrage. They need to take this between heroes. No, he gets off the damage! The big claws come out and rip those propellers right off the helicopter. Gyro that, down. That was some sick bait. And that's why he held those stick charges for so long. Like, he could have used them. Like, he got di dived on earlier and lived on about 70 HP a minute ago and said, nope, I'll hold on to them. I'll just salve up. Was that max stick charges was kind of losing some value and efficiency by not just using them and getting more charges. But it pays off when you've got that big burst heal, as we just saw. So Invoker now has Sunstrike, but no Monotee. He's now gone back for three Wex. He's, hees all over the place with these these. What rooms. is this build? I have i don't know. I have not I, seen that much Invoker, is, so I'm not sure yeah, what the optimal is build is, but this is rather curious. It's the, the, the let's get equal points in every 
I can't attribute. argue with his laning though. <laughs> no, no. It. With this CS, I mean, maybe it's worth just a, a hodgepodge. Get the fast Midas and, and start rocking. Three Wex definitely signaling that he's going from more of a Quas Wex build. I guess the two Exalt gets that bit of extra damage on your Sunstrike. I think it goes from like 106 damage to 175 or something. So it's at least a decent boost in your Sunstrike damage at level 2. Or 162 damage at level 2. And if you look at this game, like the Tornado EMP is really powerful against a lot of these heroes. Rex Ursa especially. It really does. He's got a tiny mana pool. Well, Eleven gonna swing down towards bottom with an invis rune. So he wants to make a move. Meanwhile, Big Go wrapping on mid, but Quap will blink forward just as old chicken retreats. Gets behind the tower, should be okay. I'll have to see where U9 goes. He's got one point in the stun early, which you don't see on your normal greedy mid alchemist. I think with the slow bad start he's had, he may go more for a early max stun build and just stick with the one Grievel's greed point. Uh, I have to wait and think. I, I could see either being either working. Like if you're free farming away, definitely the max Grievel's greed is the way to go. But in a game like this, there's a lot of good cause uh, to go for a more stun focused build. Looks like Bingo does have his ultimate available. Might want to make a jump on CTY mm -hmm. here. Just have to be careful about that call down though, because they have switched up the lanes. Mm, this is not the. This is a dangerous lane for Jared to be in. Once Quap hits level eight, we'll have the max out scream. Yeah, you just you just start harassing with the shadow strike. You get him like maybe like a hundred HP lower, and then you just blow him yep. up. Yeah, you only need him on like around five hundred ish HP. Oh, Alk stuns there, interrupts lands initiation, and finally a bounty rune. It's sec yeah, he got the I think eight, uh, eight minute right. one was yeah. also a bounty, but still ten minutes. This is pretty bad. Yep. And for Tong Fu, if they can... And you'd rather have the early runes. Then you get the fast bottle, you can actually snowball on the lane instead of oh, clinging yeah. on for dear life. Yeah. Tong Fu do have Roche taking potential now. Ursa level 7 with maxed out Fury Swipes, so not going for a more laning-focused build with overpower. Ooh, or cute little dive from LPC, and that will be enough to blow up old chicken. And he's been waiting for that play. He's really wanted to use the Sonic Wave on mid. That was where they went for the earlier kill, where out couldn't get the stun off. Very much... Being patient for that first Sonic Wave kill onto the Invoker, who is was the most timed here in the game. No longer. Alchemist even getting the last hit, which puts him at number one. So you can crush an Alchemist in lane, but here, 11 minutes in the game, it's Alchemist who has the last laugh, at least, for now. I, I guess we're going to see an Orchid from our Invoker as he's picked up the Robe of the Magi. Yep. I Ghost walk pretty gank good. shenanigans. Yep. Pretty good against squishy supports. Yep. And the other thing could potentially get is like a drums, but yeah, gets a second robe now and goes towards the bottom lane. Looks like they want to try and bring oh, down he just the Ursa. I, I guess he wants to actually complete a Oblivion staff he, first, rather. Yeah, he didn't actually... If he TP'd with it, then it'd be nice, but it's not worth... He can, can get it from the side shop now instead, rather than tie up the courier. They are prepping for the jump on Zing Q bottom lane. Rubik's here. But they charge. And they engage. And now the Ursa actually... Given alacrity fine. here. <laughs> Not sure that was the plan, but we'll be okay. Tornado allows them to get a bit deeper. Tong Fu, they're really committing for the dive. The clap comes out from Zing Q of nice placement on the egg just because it's so Fantastic. far away from everybody else. Zing Q is going to go down to the call down, and now they run forward, chasing for a bit more. Tunting three down, looking for the fourth. U9 surrounded, tanking the rocket barrage. He's going to be the next man down, it appears. Heals up for now, but they keep on diving. Suicide? Bashed for days and we'll end up going down. Four dead and Quap not ultimate. able to do much. That was just like the sickest Phoenix ultimate you could imagine. The positioning was so good. It was like right next to the tower, but everybody yeah. was either here or over, over the here. The Alchemist was next to it in rage form and I, he couldn't kill him by itself, but it was what? The Wyvern who was coming in and actually hit the egg once or twice thinking the Alchemist was going to go in it. So they could have killed it if Alk had gone in it right away, but Alk also went to throw a stun. So very much... I mean, you kill the egg, you still lose the fight. It, I, it's still a 4 for 1 instead of a 4 for 0. So it wasn't going to be a good fight regardless. The egg was just on point from Kaka. And that this is just the time where Ehome hit their stride. They teep in the gyrocopter. Very kind of C-deck S play uh, from what we saw like the, during the classic TI4 aggressive gyro where he just comes in once he has that max rocket barrage and cooldown available. That fight even began with a handicap with old chicken <laughs> casting alacrity on the Ursa. I think he meant to uh, cold snap him, but... Can you, can you alacrity enemies? I guess so, because he had the buff. 
I saw it on above maybe, him. Maybe Rubik stole it. Oh, I maybe. think Rubik stole maybe it Rubik earlier. Stole it must have been Rubik stealing it earlier. Okay. When you said that, I was like, huh, I didn't know you could do that. And then I clicked Rubik and he had soul rips. Maybe, so. maybe it was the Rubik then. It looked like it was yeah. the invoker because I just see him running at him. And Rubik <laughs> was like going in for the lift. <laughs> like, what's going on but, here? All right. Yeah. yeah maybe it, it, must have, it must have been the Rubik who had the alacrity used and then stole soul rip, which was actually a nice spell to keep the Ursa alive a little bit longer, but didn't Dyer's get too much more. Nice deep ward from Kaka behind the mid tier one. This is... I mean, Ehome get the tier 1 bottom, and now they're just swinging mid, looking to do the exact same thing. All their ultimates already back up. Up on the high ground, desperately trying to cobble together a little farm. But Ehome are ready to fight. Yep. Five and heroes congregating near mid. U9 gonna go for the mech build on Alchemist. This is like the is old classic. super way to play the out, yeah. but... Uh. You stack Ancients, you farm with Acid, not the Grievel's Greed, and go for a more utility build. Well, then I guess you have to ask, why not just get a Shadow Fiend? I'm not a big fan of the mech build on Alk anymore. I think you can play it like as a... Like, go for like maybe a Medallion Blink type build. I think it was Notel who's done that from time to time, where he goes to the utility build. Um, but not the mech. Like the, the mech is just not an item which I think the hero needs. And it doesn't really give his team like suddenly, oh, you've got a mech, now you can team fight. Heroes like Ursa don't want to take 5v5 fights. That's where they're kind of weak. Queen of Pain's going for a Yule Scepter, which is also a weak 5v5 fighting item. So I just don't feel like it's an item that fits the game and Tongfu's timing windows. They, and just their playstyle, they can't go for 5v5 fights, which is where the mech is going to be strongest. I'm not sure what we're going to see out of the Ursa here. Tries to run in bottom. Zex Finger will engage. Oh, with this, might be able to get a kill. Commits the ultimate. There's the heal. Could drop the tomb. Needs to juke if he wants to do it. Charge is coming. Not, can't run fast enough, though. And now the Phoenix potentially in a compromised position as Faith moves in. Almost has the level six. They're still charging. It's a long way to go. He's got the ultimate. They're going to need some good lockdown here. They do have the egg available. May have to commit it. It's in Q. Tries desperately to run, but Tornado EMP gives him no escape. And we'll finish him off. The Enrage ending there. And down he goes. Yeah, I think in the Urso, one of the big things is you always want to be taking Roche, but it hasn't really been any openings. You're on the Radiant side, so even if you try and smoke in, if you get caught there and busted, it's a huge loss for your team, and then you're potentially giving Radiant's E home Roshan. So it's just not really worth trying to sneak a Roshan unless things get really ugly, which you're not at that point yet. If Ehome get a few more towers and really start starving you out, then you maybe make a play for it. Uh, outside of that, Tongfu want to use their smokes. Uh, I'd say fairly soon, just with the Ursa. Once he gets his Blink Dagger, he was trying to get a bit greedy there to finish his Blink. But when they hit that Blink timing, that's where Tongfu will get powerful. Man, definitely helped out by the freshly planted lane ward as well. Giving good vision here to Ehome. Now working towards the Orchid, Old Chicken. Second Oblivion Staff about to come out. We'll see Lanham now trying to contest these Ancients a bit. Alk mm. still with only the one point in Greed, and these will be contested as Invoker. Ready to march right up. Yep. He's going to start plinking well, away at them, and they've got the Tombstone ready. Should anything arise as far as con a a contest of coming goes. out? They, I think they're arguing, where do we put the tomb? They're spamming pings on different locations. Like, what is the ideal tomb location? Should a fight break out? And they're saying, look, what put fight? it on the low ground. <laughs> Tom Farrell, yeah. screw this, man. Exactly, what fight? Have our ancients. Just leave us alone. If you put it on the high ground, it gets killed. So I actually like the spot they were suggesting on the low ground, like right in this little nook here. And not going to be needed, but... Nice, nice thing to kind of theory craft as Ehome were kind of doing there by, I think it was Eleven as well as like was it CTY or someone was spamming pings, but I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to test their ping functions, <laughs> make sure they hadn't gotten rusty. They yeah, find an angle go. for a charge, and now this puts X Bingo. Oh, it actually, is the Yules. He'll yeah, be okay. He can cancel. The Yules is a really nice item in this game. I just talked about how it's bad for five v five, but they don't want a five v five. They just want to avoid Ehome, split push, play some more Rat Dota, and Yules can stop the charge. Uh, will be good against the Invoker's Orchid, which has just been picked up, which he knew was coming, so... is a nice item for Queen of Pain. Still doesn't guarantee your safety against the Orchid, because if you have to self Yules on landing, you may get cold snapped and may get just chain stunned down before you can actually blink out, so... Still have to be very careful against Invoker. Yehomar... Slightly slowing down the pace of the game, though, and this is buying time for Tongfu. When it comes to net worth, pretty much a dead even game. Of course, the Grievel's Greed will help out there, but... Oh, here's the Blink Smoke. I he's going to talking about. Pain working towards it. Yeah, Zin Q ready to jump onto CTY. There's no call down. This is like the they, dream time to jump him. I don't know he's there exactly. I don't. 
It doesn't seem. They're pinging elsewhere. They're still searching, and they're not going to find him. Oh, they might now. He moves back yeah. in. He's going to find an empty camp. But old Chicken with a fresh orchid is also hunting, oh, and he's he zone. has seen ZingQ. Cold snap coming through. Now the EMP committed the three hero curse. They thought about a quapple. Probably wouldn't have been enough damage. So Bingo, I think wisely, going to blink away. He's charged again. Faith also trying to retreat out. Does have the Yule Scepter, though. Yeah, won't see this go through. They're, they're going to just defend mid. mid. Nicely done okay. by Tonkfu. Not bad. They, they'd love to have gotten a kill there. The smoke from the Ursa Winter Wyvern was very much looking for that kill on the farming jungle hero because that, that was a very safe place for Jared to be farming up until this point. Now, Ehome have to suspect that wards have been planted, but they missed the D ward with their sentry. They're not going to catch the observer ward, and that makes their life a little bit harder not having full control over their own jungle. Well, Rubik's still call down. This could be oh, big. Wow. That's Level handy. two as well. That's a No silly curse, mistake though, to, to set it up. He TP'd in mid, showed himself. Oh, dear. That's his ex bingo down. EMP committed and tries to blink away. Actually, looks like he will be able to escape, but the Nether Strike instead goes the way of LPC as Lanham commits for this one. No yeah. curse to punish. They have committed a tomb. So I think Tonk that's a mistake. Back. Old Chicken needs to hold on to Cold Snap until after the Yule's there. A bit of a, a bit of a mess up. If you he, he Cold Snap him on the Yule's landing, he can't blink out against the Rocket Barrage. Cold Snap. But. Not the end of the world, but it, that leads, that's a T1 tower as well, possibly at the top lane or even a tier 2 mid. And Zex Bingo has just been dodging bullets. He's, he's feeling like Neo in the Matrix yeah. here. Still 1-0-1 one, and one after all that pressure. So maybe we see Ehum just fall back, take a Roshan here with their... It's not even really failed ganks at this point. It's just Tongfu are playing so cautiously and defensively. They're hugging their towers. They're sticking together as 4 or 5. Spirit Breakers just keeps on charging, but keeps on ha having to cancel them because of how... Just defensive Tongfu are playing. So you go for Roshan and say, you either give us Roshan and the ability now five men push you, or you come and fight us, which is what Ehome want to do right now. They're so much stronger. They want to fight. Tongfu aren't having it, though. They're split pushing top, split pushing where everywhere else. They're going to scout it out with a Quap Illusion, but it's too late. Well, let's see who's going to grab the Aegis here. Looks like it will be CTY picking that up. They are split push, as you mentioned, with Sex Bingo, but hasn't really itemized for maximum no. rats, so... Unable to take the tower down. Looks like Ehome should be able to hang on to this if they want to TP. I wonder he goes for it. It feels like a good Ag Scepter game. It's pretty good for the split push because you can push out the waves fast. And against a team that's going to likely five-man five man push you fairly soon. Maybe not with this Aegis, but at some point having the Ag's short cooldown uh, I think can help Bingo a lot this game. LPC trying for a D ward here. Just missing on the hill by a bit. Actually dropped another sentry over near the Ancients a bit earlier. Just trying to remove this aggressive vision from Ehome. I think Ehome will look to secure their late game now. Probably go back for a Midas on a few heroes like the Spirit Breaker. Surprisingly, Phoenix did not go for a Midas. Wanted to have the fast Glimmer Cape. Um, but I think you want at least one Midas on either Spirit Breaker or Phoenix. Yeah, I could even You could even justify an Undying Midas with how good he can be late game with the new Ag Scepter upgrade. I've seen some Undyings go for like an, a Midas post mech, and you get like a 25 minute Midas, but it guarantees that. In a that. competitive game? Who yeah. did it? Um, good question. Who did it? I don't remember who did it, but. Huh. I've seen like a mech into Midas Undying. Really? Yep. Okay. I've seen a couple of Ags rushes, but I haven't seen anyone just get a Midas first. That's interesting. It's never been like a first item, because you always yeah. want to be able to dominate the, the early to mid game with your mech timing, but. To kind of secure some late game farm, the Midas works out quite nicely. Do you think it's a, a good build on him? or mm. This game I think it's decent, but in general it's it's very situational. It's like when when your opponents are playing this defensive and not giving you any kills or fights. Like we haven't seen the Undying actually do anything by no fault of his own for a good 10-15 minutes because of Tongfu's place. They want to curse old chicken and they will find him. Pop yep. ult jams it in. This is, this is Tongfu. This is all they're going to do for the next 10, 15, 20 minutes. Whatever it may be is just find pickoffs wherever they can on the map and then immediately back off. They're not looking to fight. They're looking to split push and catch. And that's it. And farm at the same time. Obviously, you've got to maintain your level of farm, which with an alchemist, they always can do. And that's an expensive kill on an invoker who was doing pretty damn well before that. Oh, this aggressive ward giving a lot of vision to Ehome, though it didn't scout that particular gank. And in fact, there's another ward off in the woods. So they really should be able to identify when Tongfu are making their moves this direction. 
it's not going to be any minuses. Spirit Break actually is going to go for a Shadow Blade, so... They were all in on the early to mid game on the E-Home side, and Tongfu, if they can survive for a bit, do have comeback potential this game. Yeah, the one piece of economy, they have a CTY's Dominator, and he is sitting at 10k with Ancients oh, yeah. being stacked down by the Super Satter Banisher. You say that as he misses a stack, though, yeah, unfortunately. Should be getting stacked. <laughs> I think he's already cleared one, at least, yeah. judging by his farm. I like that he's gone for this, the, the Dom build. So securing, when you want to push down towers and fight lots, having the backup farm to fall back on, I kind of talked about this in one of the early games, is always handy as a gyro. And the Dominator helps you fight. It's plus five armor against an Ursa. It's 20 damage, so it's by no means a bad fighting item. Just doesn't give you the HP and stats that normally you see gyros go for with SMY BKB. Yeah, with the Aegis now, let's see. Time remaining, two minutes. Looks like that's the queue, e home. We see a tier one still standing on the map, and they're simple enough to think. Let's just go kill it. Let's continue pushing. Yep. Sex Bingo. Going in Viz now. Does have his ult queued up in 30. Mm. Doesn't, I mean, tier one tower is probably just under, like, can't be defended. So it looks like they'll let that one go, throw out a glyph, and TTY with the alacrity will be the one looking to take it down almost by himself at this point. And if you're e home, you're not just happy enough getting a tier one and five manning right now because your opponents are splitting the map much better. You really need to try find some key pickoffs soon. Well, on the mid lane, a big charge in. Commitment as they. Cold snap Zex Bingo, but not enough to kill him off now. The Invoker on the chase Zex Bingo is retreating rapidly. And things start to get a little wild here as the oh, Wyvern TP's barely out. able to TP out. Narrowly escaping in the midst of the chaos. Yeah, they didn't have the damage to lock him in place with the Cold Snap. Just the Invoker right click. They needed something like a Rocket Barrage. And Zing Q also out of there on the Ursa. So everybody escapes. Tong Fu don't give up any kills and... It's a lot of time invested. Ehome are keeping up good map control, so they're trying to make their life easy to find these picks, but considering how the vision they have, it's really been a long time since they've got a kill. Ehome. Really feeling like they just want to try and starve out Tong Fu at this stage of the game. They've gone back for an SMY on U9, who's now leveling up Grievel's Greed, so we'll be going back for... The more farm-based alchemist, no stat points or anything like that, is going to transition into a, a BKB most likely with the mithril, ha mithril hammer pickup. Uh, meanwhile, Faith, as well as Xbingo, just the whole Tong Fu squad playing very conservatively over near their tier two. They're going to move out onto the ancients. Wards were plopped down mid, and they still have that one hill ward. Yeah, it just doesn't feel like they got much out of this Aegis. It wasn't even really, like, sometimes you see teams in the, like, at this stage, you get an Aegis and you don't have the best lineup you use a, as a farming Aegis, but Ehome have been grouping up. They haven't been playing that efficiently. They got down some deep wards and good map control, but Tongfu themselves avoided all the ganks, kept on split pushing, buying themselves times, and do find themselves able to now kind of play around the fact that Ehome don't have an Aegis if they want to go for it. This is like time to smoke if you're Tongfu. Use something like the Rubik Ursa to uh, find some pickoffs on the either Invoker or the Gyrocopter, especially before Gyro has BKB. Uh, BKB, let's see, how far is it? Mithril Hammer already picked up nothing in the stash or on the Courier, so still has to complete the other two remaining components. There's Lanham. Oh, they've got a gem. This is... The we'll next again, trying to deward. It looks like yeah, Kaka with the early gem grab. Yep. Map control is the name of the game for Ehome. And strategically, they're doing everything right. They're kind of grouping out when they should with the Aegis. They've got the gem for the map control. They just haven't executed and found the pickoffs. And I think a lot of that is more Tongfu's good play rather than Ehome just messing up or making bad plays. But it is very costly right now because Ehome's lead is not a lead at all. We are dead even as far as the farm between the two teams goes. Could get tense here as they're going to jump and devour 11. Almost fish you off instantly, but the mech comes through. He's not able to get the tombstone off because of the Winter's Curse. That means CTY will be next. Two down. The copter plummets to Earth. There we go. They Big. Just... And, you know, you mentioned Tung Fu's good play. It, it definitely a bit of luck as well. Like, they smoke right here. There's a lane ward just over here. Not the alternative ward that we sometimes see over in this area. And so, as a result, they don't yeah. see the smoke coming. They're completely caught off guard. And... Credit to Tong Fu for continuing to find the picks. If you're Ehome, you're just looking at this like, what are we doing wrong? We've got all the deep wards down. We're 
grouping up with Aegis. We got the like, it's gonna be so frustrating for them right now that all these gank attempts are just failing. And Tongfu themselves are just outplaying the hell out of Eho. Bit of luck and just uh, I'd probably say a, a lot of just really nice good play. And now they're the ones who just smoke up at the right time when Aegis expires and are now trying to take out a T1 tower, but it's a BKB on the Alchemist. Lanham's gonna commit for this, but they had a sentry ready. Quick drop turnaround play. Lanham thought he could get the jump and he was dead wrong about that. As they chase forward onto Old Chicken, the tombstone gets dropped and I saw it, but they're slapping and beating down 11. He will fall. Dex Bingo leaping forward. Call down committed. This is a good one, but they're also tanky on Tongfu. I'm not sure how much it matters. Bingo starting to drop a bit. I'll just blink away. Faith also retreating. And then up onto the high ground is the Ursa. This looks like everybody gets out on Tongfu as they continue to pull themselves back by their bootstraps into this game. What was dead even is now a 4,000 gold lead and it, rising. It really feels like Faith is having a big impact on this team with just his captain and leadership. That was very... Like, he charged with Shadow Blade. They instantly dropped a sentry and got the lift off. Yep. Very nice teamwork between the supports there. And, and we kind of... I kind of talked a lot about, like, what's even Ehome doing wrong this game? And I think the one thing they did wrong was not itemizing towards getting Midas's. Phoenix as well as Spirit Breaker. The two supports for the team should be getting Midas in a game like this. You get an early game advantage. You want to secure some late game farm and levels. Spirit Breaker would have another, like, level or two on him. Same with the Phoenix. And you would just be getting the same level of items just a bit later initially a bit later but your late game items are actually better than what you'd otherwise have so to me not getting Midas's is really costing Ehome this game yeah even invoker here that often does yeah. get, get one as well but opted for the early orchid haven't really felt the orchid Ooh. one two and three yeah, we get to see a key silence that really changes a fight and obviously at this point with Tongfu five manning orchid is not a very strong item yeah. I think it was Newbie Young, their mid player. That he was the last invoker I saw, and it worked out well. And he did go for a Midas before the Orchid. As much as it can delay your Orchid timing, having that late game insurance just seems the way you want to play. Phoenix only now picks up a Gloves of Haste, so he's going back for a 30 minute plus Midas. Like at that point, like, you're always like, when is it too late to get a Midas? If you're playing for a 60 plus minute game, then yeah, it's probably still okay to get a Midas, but. And also, he wants to guarantee the fastest possible level 16. At this stage, Phoenix needs level 16 more than he needs any one particular item, but it's still. I'm not seeing Eho matching late. up very well at 60 minutes. You've got five no. heroes that scale great into the late game on Tongfu, and the tombstone falls off. The egg can be dealt with if you're behind as a Phoenix. Even Invoker, great utility hero, not going to out carry the likes of an Alchemist or a Queen of Pain slash Ursa. Not to mention, that means you're playing the farm war versus Alk, and that is generally a bad idea, even though he hasn't gone for a greedy build. And you're just not going to have the kind of items to deal with, like an Ursa. There's not going to be a Halberd on a Spirit Breaker or a Phoenix anytime soon. You're just, you're not getting a B, like Spirit Breaker needed a BKB for that charge engagement so he doesn't get lifted, and Lanham not going to farm that. He went all in on this early game Shadow Blade, which got immediately countered by a Sentry Ward, so. Again, gods, another smoke. It was right here, just out of vision of the Observer <laughs> Ward, so... Oh, man. I mean, Tang Fu, they tried to de-ward their jungle. They failed, but it works out okay anyway, it looks like. Yeah. And Roche back online. Jaro with the Helmet of Dominant will have the constant scouting access to the pit. And Ehome have been playing with perfect map vision for pretty much the entire game. Nothing getting de-warded. They've had the gem as well, but it hasn't... Like, it's very rare you see a team with perfect map vision not just take control and not and be the ones on the back foot like we see e home so looks like they're expecting to get flanked and in fact there is a smoke coming but it's over towards mid where the real flank is developing nothing to flank though yeah. so ursa will grab a bkb it looks like they're just going to camp here until someone comes to defend the t2 mid or alk may just force someone to defend so he shows himself e home will immediately know he's got backup probably expect it to be either behind him or on the exact hill that tongfu is standing on and Big kind of uh, moment of truth for Ehom if they decide to try and defend this or not. And with the T2 already under siege and positioning not working in Ehom's favor, I think they will just have to let this one go. God, this Alk is so so chill compared to your normal 32-minute Alk. Yeah, he's hitting he's like <laughs> once every uh, three seconds uh, or something. Like, what his is this? swords are heavy. It's hard work hitting buildings. Yeah, it's not a charge you want to go for, Lanham. Yeah. Tough for Lanham at this point. Oh, he's gonna try for the Nether Strike, but even the Rubik just blinks away. Yeah. Hasn't been able to find openings in some time. Neho 
home now. Really, in a tough spot. They walk into Roshan. This is actually a bit of a slip up by Tong Fu if they let this one go. They're drawing. They're drawing all over Rosh, uh, but nobody's going. And they see Alk bottom. They saw heroes pushing out mid. They actually know they're quite safe here. And yeah, Ehum will just slip one by. I don't believe there's a smoke on oh, the Tong Fu. This could be Bay giving this Aegis oh, away. They're grouping up bottom. They have a, no, no smoke on Wyvern. They, they're just five manning here, headed towards Rosh, but way too late. Do they want to fight anyway? We'll find out soon enough as the Roche is about to drop. They're trying to let... Looks like CTY get the last hit. Got to finish this thing. Are they baiting? It seems they're baiting. They want them to come in. They'll kill off the Roche at Long Glasses. Lanham gets the two hero charge through before the BKB from U9 comes out. Then the call down's there. 11 trying to work at CTY who got cursed. Not what he wanted to do, but ZenQ roars into the middle of the fight with the activated enrage and just destroys the A. Clobbers everyone. Ehom. No idea why they just stopped fighting the Roche. They let Tong they... get on top of them and they <laughs> paid. Great, great bait, mate. <laughs> I don't know. That was they were trying to be so cute there. They're like, let's wait till they're right on top of us and are forced to fight, and we'll have an 6v5 with Aegis. But Alright, guys, here's a brilliant idea. Let's I... fight Ursa in close quarters combat. <sighs> oh. I, I mean Ehome are just so much weaker now. Like the like you just look at some of the items they have. The Shadow Blade, which isn't gonna help out in that kind of a fight. The Orchid gets countered on the key heroes by BKB, Quap with the Yules, Alk with the BKB. So the Orchid can maybe stop a Winter's Curse, which didn't actually happen, which I think needed to be the play from Invoker. Try and Orchid the Wyvern and you burst down Wyvern because that, that was just one of the winning spells of the fight was the Curse and having a Cold Embrace. But even so, it just felt like a bad position to be on. Tongfu have the kind of the high ground advantage, even if you know they were coming from that direction. They had the Ward, which expired, but did spot Tongfu coming. Now Tongfu in a fantastic position after that that team fight victory. And the I mean this this Phoenix as well. The egg just is so easily dealt with by Ursa. Oh, yeah. Definitely one of his better attributes as a hero for dealing with that. And and now we're seeing the struggle. Uh, it's still a Phoenix trying to finish off a Midas, which he's been working on for like. 50. He got like, this Glimmer Cape. I I feel like in the first 16 to 18 minutes of the game. Spirit Breaker has not seen a new item pick up apart from wards in the last 15 minutes of the game. There has been zero item progression for these dire supports, and not just the supports, the Undying as well. He's had Arcane's mech for the longest time I can imagine. The farm game has been severely lost by Ehome. And now they're down 12,000 gold, 7,500 experience with a lineup that... I mean, would you agree that Tongfu just flat out scale better going late? Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think Kind of like you mentioned, all of their heroes going to keep on transitioning well into the late game. Phoenix, Undying, two heroes who really struggle to to go late. Oh, they do find Unai, but he's got a BKB, pops the Chemical Rage, and he doesn't need to use anything because they just force staff him down. Great comp, poise under pressure there from Tang Fu. Yeah. And that's another smoke commitment down the drain. With this smoke failing, they've got none for 11 long and lonely minutes. They're all in on the Gyro late game, too, who's kind of alone as a carry. Invoker. How is Gyro going to carry against this lineup late game? Abyssal can... Blade. You get the double Abyssal Blade, potentially. Curse. So much physical damage. Hex. You go with Butterfly, Ursa will happily farm an MKB. And there's going to be a Basher on the Ursa. Alchemist can go for, an, yeah, like, like you said, an Abyssal Blade as well. Or if they need an MKB against the Gyro Evasion, they can do so. This is just going to be a tough gyro game. Well, Ehome just kind of falling apart here, gods. Yep. They S still at least they're getting out on the map, but it just it's more <laughs> it's, what are they farming for at this point? And it's still just like the gyro alone farming. He's headed back to the jungle now. Invoker finds some farm here or there from time to time, but even if you try and now give some farm back towards your supports and your off lane in the Undying. These are not flash farmers. They're going to take a long time to build up any sort of significant item. At best, you're looking at like a, a four-star type item or complete your Midas on a Phoenix. They're not going to be game-changing items that you can pick up on these heroes. So you're very much pigeonholed into it. Like, okay, we've just got to farm up the Invoker and the Gyro because these are the two heroes who can get meaningful items while the other three heroes are just stuck as being late-game supports. And not having like a BKB on a Spirit Break in the late game really costs him. He can't deal with the Yules, the Lift. There's just a lot of items he's going to struggle to verse. Lanham was trying to just leech a little experience top lane, maybe find a pick off, but he sees Ursa top. He's like, oh, that's not the hero I was looking for. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe some sick invoker plays from old chicken. 
Yeah, if you get some 360 deafening blast swag. Even he is just level 15 right now, so kind of lacking in levels right That's now. That's where the uh, it's 38 minutes, and I I wouldn't even. That's it, really where the Midas is just oh, man, so they, essential on Invoker. It feels they should have gotten at least two Midas's this game. I wouldn't have even mind seeing three. Maybe four would be a bit overkill, but <laughs> having no Midas's is actually they, lost. They should take a page out of Teban's it's, book. It's lost them this game. I could. I feel like it, they, they, this, they. It's not over quite yet, but well, the gods. This is why America won the international five. Yep. They know to buy their Midas's. We know how to build Midas's. Actually, I we think are there a were no capitalist country, you know. <laughs> China can learn something from our capitalist country. <laughs> that is one thing the American Dota scene is doing right now. They are Mark, building. They are building some. I mean, China should. Damn Midas. They, they should want this, you know. You you spread the wealth. That's that's how it works. With the Midas's on your supports. But right now we're looking at a very <laughs> top heavy. Did you just make upper a communist class. joke? <laughs> yes. I mean, I guess this game deserves it. Twenty-two <laughs> kills in thirty-eight minutes. Wait, look at Jaro. You've got the rich and the poor. If either of these teams resembles America right now, it's eHome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Winter's giving me a dirty look for that joke. <laughs> I mean, let's be serious. If you look at the wealth distribution in China, it's not very <laughs> classically communist. <laughs> I think Wang Zikan uh, might have a thing no, or two no. to, to say to counter that. And the 39-minute Midas has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Latest minus in Dota 2 history, maybe I don't know. Oh Teasy's God. probably done worse when like some of the what was it the TI <laughs> the TI four minus. No, the timer that was wasn't even that bad. No. It was just as yeah, his that was like was a dying. twenty-five minute minus right before they. That was when his base was dying. Yeah, they were also Roshi when their base was dying, but that was a that was a rough. Loss. This has got to be like at least top five latest minus pickups ever. And I'm sure there's someone out there who wants to challenge you with their 80-minute Midas pickup. <sighs> it's actually still like the right item for Phoenix, just because he needs that level 16. Um, just that it, it may still not be enough to your egg to survive against Ursa, but again, what else can you buy this game? And Atos, Hal Halberd is actually a damn expensive item to buy when you're a, like five-position Phoenix. God, they really want to deward this hill. But it's risky. Oh boy. Tornado comes over the top. They're going to get some vision, courtesy of the race. They will get rid of it. Kung Fu, slow and steady on the siege. They've now got Knife Scotty on U9. This is. And Aku went for the like, least farmy build you'll ever see, and he's still the leader in net worth as the fight really breaks out. Quapple doing great work over the top here for Zex Bingo, though U9 gets trapped within. There's the Winter's Curse, turning the fight around, letting the Slap Chop go to work, and ZinQ also going to get involved here. As the egg pops, they don't care. The invoker down. I even got the stun out from the egg, and it won't matter. Now just tanking up this game. I, I don't know if this was really the optimal Alchemist build this game, but it doesn't necessarily matter. Ursa dishes out more than enough damage, so Alk just saying, yeah, I'll just stay alive and provide my AC aura, keep spamming acid stuns in a fight, and be home now. Gonna lose the bottom lane of Rex. Possibly even be forced to GG out. They're going to be forced to rethink their lives after this game. Oh this, was, this really felt like Ehome had it. They had, like, their first 20 minutes was played out how it should. Like, they had map control. They had the early game dominance. They just could never find the pickoffs they needed. They had to find picks. The Orchid Invoker had never found, this, like, a single kill it felt like. And they got the Aegis, and all they got with that Roshan was a T1 top tower. That is just inadequate. That was something they could have got without. Having oh, that Yule Scepter interruption, the Quample there to greet Lanham as he pops that back down to Earth. And they continue to chase the Alk. Will stun himself. This is the best time to fight. No Chemical Rage for a little bit, but he pops the BKB. He runs in anyway, and they're still fighting through this. The Ursa as well. The big bruisers get to work on CTY. Force you back. Butterfly helping out a bit here. Ehome. This could be their fight, or maybe not. Alchemist oh, has rage the chemical rage yeah. off. He can tank through it all. Oh, the Wyvern's going to keep him in fighting shape. Zex Bingo on the hunt. They brought down two. They're looking for more. Eleven on the run. Old Chicken also getting run over. And Tung Fu snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. They will take game one. A shocker for Riho. That, I mean, I, I hope 7-1 has some words to say to his team, because I, I mean, for one thing, I feel like there was some element of just Tong Fu really just outmaneuvered them in the early to mid game when they just couldn't find pickoffs. But moving into the late game, the itemization needs to be changed when, when you're that far ahead because you're playing from that far ahead. You're never really guaranteed to find the pickoffs. At best, you can five man take down. They could have definitely taken down like a tier two tower here or there. But if Tong Fu plays smart, they avoid the pickoffs. That's exactly what happened. And then to beat that, you've got to out farm them, which they just didn't do. So.
Even like one more Midas would have helped. As well as just not not just the Midas, but like they were too gun like they were too trigger happy with the smokes. Like they blew so many smokes in a row and they already had map control. They had aggressive wards, but well, at the same time Tang Fu played great. They found their openings, they had a couple good team fights. Their smoke timings take were one. so good this game. They had the one where they caught out the two by the Roche pit, then their follow up smoke was when they actually took the Roshan as well. So they Tongfu like used their smokes perfectly. You could not ask for like better. Like Tongfu, I think played this game amazingly well, and win with like an Ursa draft and Alchemist who got destroyed in the first five minutes. That of the was game. one of the worst spankings mid I've oh, ever yeah. seen, and it was a Boker doing it, but it didn't matter. Didn't yeah. really do much with the farm. So guys, with that game one a wrap, we're gonna head into game two. Take a quick break here. Ehome versus Tongfu will continue after this. G2A.com, the best video game store ever. Fast as lightning. Solid as a rock, cheap as duck. <laughs> What's more, you can sell on it because it's also a marketplace. Remember G2A.com, the best video game store ever. 